Okay, yeah. You see my curtain, library curtain behind me is moving because it's there's a breeze going. The air conditioner is turned off right now because I turn it off from 12 to 1 during the day to give it a break so it doesn't get overheated and doesn't get the power bill too high. And I also give myself a rest because it's over there and that gives this arm a chance to warm up because it gets so cold from being right in the path of the air conditioner. But Lynx likes it because she's got essentially a winter coat year-round. So summer's not fun for her and she can just lay right, she's right there. Laying down on the chair, staying cool and not getting overheated. Which she loves. And so that's why today my facts are about air conditioners. Or, let me read it. This is from Wikipedia, by the way. Don't... Take it as gospel truth, please. Thank you. Yeah. In 1901, American inventor Will Willis H. Carrier built what is considered the first modern electrical air conditioning unit. In 1902, he installed his first air conditioning system in the Sackett Wilhelms Lithographing and Publishing Company in Brooklyn, New York. And it says later, together with six other employees, Carrier formed the Carrier Air Conditioning Company of America, a business that in 2020, so modern day, employed 53,000 people and was valued at 18.6 billion. That's a lot of money. And in 1906, someone else was upgrading, you know, they came up with some upgrader things that did, it said his name was Stuart W. Kramer of Charlotte, North Carolina. Exploring ways to add moisture to the air in a textile mill. He can bind moisture with ventilation. Oh, what's that noise? Oh, I fell down. That might just been, might been nothing. Just the cat's jumping up and down. Just be there. And um, yeah. Yeah, in 1914, the first domestic air conditioning was installed in Minneapolis in the home of Charles Gilbert Gates. It is, however, possible that the considerable, considerable, considerable device, size-wise, whoa, 7 feet by 6 feet by 20 feet, was never used as the house remained uninhabited. He had died the year before. Gates had died the year before. So I don't know. That's just weird. In 1931, H. H. Schultz <coughs> and J. Q. Sherman developed what would become the most common type of individual room air conditioner. One desi designed to sit on a window ledge, like mine is now. The units went on sale in 1932 at 10000 to 50000 American dollars. Which, at, you know, adjusting for inflation, blah, 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 last year would have been between $200,000 and $1.1 million. I'm like, dude, who's got that kind of, the air conditioner is useful. I just want to say it's very nice. A year later, the first air conditioning systems for cars were offered for sale. Yes, Chrysler Motors in 1935. Packard, when was Packard? As in Hewlett Packard? They became the first automobile manufacturer to offer an air conditioning unit in its cars in 1939. Because, yeah, Chrysler in. 1935 was a semi-portable air conditioning unit. But yeah, it doesn't say if Packard was Hewlett Packard, but that's just my assumption. That's where I know the name from. And then, okay, 
1945, Robert Sherman from Lynn, Massachusetts invoided, invented a portable in-window in air conditioner that cooled, heated, humidified, dehumidified, and filtered the air. The first inverter air conditioners were released in 1980 and 1981. Okay, and that's enough for now. Uh, I'm exhausted reading all that. But now I want... I'll, I'll look later to see if that was Hewlett Packard. So yes, the beginning of the 1900s was when we started getting air conditioners. And I am grateful for them. Oh, it so annoys me when people are, act like suffering is beneficial. Um, Suffering just to... Act like you're so tough? No, that really accomplishes nothing. The suffering that you go through through life can be educational, but that's like saying, yeah, I can punch myself in the face. That doesn't mean I'm going to learn something from it. Air conditioning is our friend. 